there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. 9-11 is a day that you don't want to remember, but that you will never forget. Apparently a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. I have a vivid memory of sitting on my parents' bed, um, watching as the second plane flew into the second tower. And I mean, there's so much unknown at the time. Um, there were so many questions, and there were no answers. We still had school that day, but the, the feeling at school was tense. It was, everybody was on edge. Nobody really knew what was happening or what was going on. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now, raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way. There Both trade towers, where thousands of people work on this day, Tuesday, have now been attacked and destroyed. In newsrooms, they're always hustling and bustling, and there's always structure to the day. We have a morning editorial meeting where we assign stories, and we know what our lead story is going to be, and we know, we know what people are doing. And, and that day, um, we spent hours in front of our TV monitors, just watching as the rest of the world was watching. And the same image was on all of the television screens, even on the Weather Channel and ESPN. And you know, at that point, it really wasn't clear what was happening. You could just sense in the newsroom air that it was something that was huge. I think it's the quietest I've ever heard a newsroom. Everybody goes straight, there's ambulances about 100 feet ahead. This is the World Trade Center on the floor. God bless America. Let's go to the White House. Claire Shipman is on the phone. Claire, what's that we're looking at? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. All we know is it's a gigantic plume of smoke coming from behind the old executive office building. It's like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, Claire, let me interrupt you for a second. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. I got into a news satellite truck with one, our weekend anchor, a photographer, and our satellite truck operator, and we drove up here to Washington, D.C. And we parked our satellite truck, I remember, down the street from the Pentagon so we could have the smoldering background. It was really surreal going from seeing the images on television to being in the presence of where it happened. And I'll never forget um, just the smell that was in the air of it's that burning fire, ash, like things have been burned smell. That really sticks out to me. Actually, I worked at the IBM in Bethesda, Maryland. You know, they kind of dismissed us from work uh, a couple of hours early. And I, re I remember as I got on 270, I tried to call the daycare and all the circuits were busy, like no calls were going through. And in that moment, um, you know, I, I guess for one of the first times, uh, I felt helpless. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. I was at my church in Moldova, which is a Eastern European country. We had a Tuesday night uh, prayer service, and all of a sudden, somebody walked up to the pastor and gave him a little note. He, uh, you know, unfolded the note, and uh, he just said, we all need to stop, and we have to pray. We just got word that the United States was attacked. At the time, I just wanted family close, my loved ones close, and my son was there with me, so I was hugging him tighter and squeezing him tighter. My friend and I just stopped and prayed. God bless America, my home sweet home. One thing that happens here in this place <coughs> is when American suffers, and when people perpetrate acts against this country, we as a Congress and as a government stand united. <coughs> and we stand together. I do remember coming out of 9-11 was this great sense of unity. You know, Americans really came together. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people... <laughs> and the 
people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. We covered events that, like interfaith events, for example, that were happening in the community, people that you wouldn't normally see together, gathering around with candlelight, having moments of silence, moments of prayer. Even though I couldn't understand what was happening and, and there were questions and there, of course, was fear and anxiety, there was still a sense of peace. I know churches had vigils and prayers and uh, I, I believe that that in many respects is what helped the country to, to rally and to move on. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you. Good night, and God bless America.